Hi there, I'm Shane. In this video, I'm going to be talking all about dog photography, whether you're taking photos of someone else's pet or your own. Hopefully I'll give you a few tips and techniques to help you to get the best photos that you can. So this video is going to be all about taking photos of dogs or really pets in general. And I'm going to be sharing some of the techniques that I've developed over the years, taking photos of my own dogs or others at weddings, couple photos, or even dog portraits that I've done. Typically, my videos are much more focused on the gear and technical aspects of photography. However, this one's going to be focusing on purely on the skills, whether you're using your smartphone or a DSLR. And if you are interested in the settings and the lenses that I recommend, I'll have a whole nother video on the topic, which I'll have linked on screen right now. I'm going to break this video up into the few key points, mainly discussing the preparation that you can do in order to set yourself up for success at the shoot. And considering you're watching this video, you're already off to a good start. The first step in planning any shoot is deciding on a time and location. And I'll run through the basics real quick. When choosing the time, your best bet is during golden hour, just before sunset just because the light is usually the most pleasant and it's not going to be terribly hot most of the time. However, it's not terribly important. The most important thing to remember is to avoid heavy directional lighting that's often present during midday. And if you do have to shoot during the middle of the day, try and find a wooded or shaded area to give yourself the best light possible. When it comes to choosing a location, your best bet's going to be somewhere where the dog feels safe, is comfortable, and there's minimal distractions. For this reason, a city park or a dog park is usually just a bad choice because they're too busy. So your best bet's often gonna be shooting at the dog's home or on a location a little bit off the beaten path with open space. So an open field somewhere or a forest trail is usually pretty nice just because there's not a ton of distractions for the dog there. Moving on to the next point though, I'm gonna discuss composition. And just as like with any type of photography, a good composition will lead to a much more visually pleasing photo, especially with dog photos. The most typical one you'll see is someone holding their phone, taking a photo of their dog while standing up. And I'm trying to insinuate that these are all bad photos, but they certainly often lead to very boring compositions. And right from the get-go, the best thing you can do to improve your photos is to get down to the dog's level. Not only is this going to make the more dog more comfortable with you, it's also going to allow you to get a view of the horizon and increase the depth to the image, giving you a much more dynamic shot with a much more pleasing background. The next thing to keep in mind with regards to composition is the good old rule of thirds. And the rule of thirds is simply a three by three grid that most cameras actually have as an option to overlay on photos while you're taking them. And most smartphones even have it these days. And the idea is, is that it's a simple compositional guide to help you better align your subject matter with the lines on the grid. And I'm not saying you have to shoot with the rule of thirds in mind. However, if you're gonna be planning to crop the photos in post, giving yourself a little bit of extra space in frame and shooting with the rule of thirds in mind will give you a lot of latitude in editing to crop the photo to be whatever you like. The last key point I'd like to make with regards to composition is having the dog's face pointing towards the side of the frame with a more open space. This is a little bit of an abstract concept, and I'll give you an example to show what I mean. If I have a photo of a dog where they're looking off the side of the frame where there's nothing really there and it's just kind of the short edge, it's going to feel rather disjointed because your eyes are going to be pointing towards the edge of the photo. Whereas if I have a photo of a dog where they're trying to run or look towards the side of the photo with more open space, it's going to make more sense and just lead to more pleasing composition. This isn't a rule though, and it certainly doesn't need to be followed all the time, and I certainly don't. However, it does lead in general to more pleasing photos that make more sense. After considering your compositions, I'd like to briefly talk about your behavior as a photographer, because a positive mood not only is going to make the shoot much more enjoyable for yourself, but also for the dog and their family. And if you come into a shoot very anxious and stern, it's going to reflect in how the dog's going to respond to you as a photographer. With that all said, dogs will be dogs, and it's very difficult to predict how they're gonna act. However, it's important to take their personalities into consideration. If a dog's a very shy one that doesn't like having a camera pointed at them, maybe try getting photos of them interacting with their family. If the dog's very energetic and running about, be prepared to take photos of them playing fetch or going through the field in not necessarily that typical portrait. 
because the photos that are going to mean most to yourself and to their family are ones that are capturing their personality. So you don't need to get fixated on getting the perfect photo. Moreover, just getting a photo of them doing their thing is often going to be much more meaningful. Now that I have those concepts fresh in our mind, it's time to actually take the photos and get the dog's attention for those photos. And there's several strategies you can take in order to achieve this. The first way you can do this is to have someone help you. And this is going to be easy if you're with their owner and they're just right beside you. But if it's your own dog, maybe have a friend come over or a family member to help you take the photos just because you're going to be focused on the camera and you'll want someone to help out. However, this can get a little more complicated when you're taking photos of the dog with their family because they're often going to be much more interested in who they're with than you, the photographer. So having some tricks to try and get their attention is often important, whether that be whistling, barking, a squeaky toy, or some sort of way to distract the dog. The most important thing is variety because they're not going to fall for the same trick multiple times. So having multiple ways to distract the dog and get them to look at you is going to lead to more successful photos. Inevitably though, at some point in the shoot, you're going to have to end up bribing the dog whether this is through their favorite toy or a treat, um, you're gonna have to give them something. And I always try and hold off on doing this as late as possible in the shoot, just because it can in itself become a distraction. However, I always try and make sure I give the dog a reward for taking photos with me, just because I wanna build up a positive association between photos and the dog so that they're eager to take photos next time they want to. An important thing to keep in mind though is always make sure you ask their owner what their favorite treat is and if they can bring it with them or what the best brand is for you to buy. Just because the last thing you want is to give the dog something that they don't like or isn't going to agree with them. The last tip I'm going to give is very simple and that is to get a good variety of photos. The reason I say this is because if you go into the shoot with one specific look in mind, there's a good chance that the dog isn't going to cooperate with that one specific look because they're not terribly predictable and your hit rate's going to be considerably lower than if you were to take photos of people. So I'm not trying to say you can't try and emulate a look and especially for professional photography, you often are going to be looking for a specific type of photo. However, just be mindful that you want to get a good amount of photos because a lot of them won't turn out. However, if you want to see some tips on how I think you can improve your hit rate and how many of your photos are in focus and are sharp, maybe check out my other video on the topic where I focus on those technical aspects a lot more. If you have any tips or recommendations that I didn't cover in this video, maybe leave a comment below and let me know and I can include them in a future video. And if you have any questions about anything that I said, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, that's going to be it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it and found some of my tips useful. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one and I hope you have a fantastic day.